Hello everyone, just a quick disclaimer before the video begins. Um, this was recorded uh, back in December, before Rogue One came out, so we didn't actually spoil Rogue One, but do check the description for stuff that we did spoil, like uh, I believe we spoiled F The Force Awakens, but I don't know. Just check to make sure if you, you know, you have been warned. Enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> My name is William, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm here with Nick. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for a, a sleepover, you could say. But... There's an interesting story behind why why Nick is here. Okay. So I woke up this morning, and I I it was a pretty normal day. I did my school, did all my did all my shit, and then I got a call from Nick. He's like. Hey, man. Oh. <laughs> your voice sounds like deeper over the phone by the way you sound, I know. you sound like my dad over the phone <laughs> 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 you're, like, you're like oh hey man oh so i need to I, can i stay over <laughs> i was like okay what for you look at my dad you know because his dad had like an operation now his uh, immune system is like it's compromised like compromised for like a, a month is it yeah like a it's about a month so yeah. so he's basically staying over yeah. at my place so i well, mean i've been staying over at various people's places because my house is my house is like it's so off limits. it's an exclusion zone it's like it's, chernobyl it's, it's quarantine <laughs> yeah it's like chernobyl in a way yeah we can't go inside like unless we wash our hands and um yeah. Besides, I don't mind being here anyway. I'm with my boy Will. <laughs> and plus, I um, I was staying out of the, this other house, and I got the allergies there, and I couldn't sleep very well. But that's not the point of it. But oh yeah. well. Basically, when it came here, we just played GTA, and then yeah, we played GTA. <laughs> and we're gonna watch Star Wars probably after this show. Yeah, uh, we went to went to what we like to call a trucker stop. <laughs> truck stop, truck aka stop. the gas station stores. Yeah. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, the gas station stores have the best kind of food. Ever. At least junk food. That is. They have the best junk food. I, I have to agree with you on that one. Like, I know. You can get your average snacks at Walmart or whatever, but they got that top quality shit, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> high tech shit. High tech shit. <laughs> okay. So now, so now where are we? The date is December 16, 2016. We got almost a week before Christmas. And last and the last time we did the we did a podcast with just me and Will it was a, it was like the week before Easter. So what do you know about this trend? We're doing it right before a big holiday. These podcasts. Tune in for the next time. Let's see what was, what was the next. Time? Oh yeah, New Year's. Oh well, I, I didn't even know. I would do these podcasts more often, but uh, it would be it would get quite, kind of boring because my only guests are you and Peter. Yeah. I could I I've attempted to have other people on, but. Either they're like too far away, so we have to try to do it over Skype, which usually doesn't turn out too yeah. well, or you know they just don't want to be on the podcast. Yeah. Like I asked Joe to be on the podcast, but oh, yeah. he, he didn't want to be on the podcast. Yeah, I could ask. Uh, it's completely reasonable. I know. But... <laughs> I could ask Nick to be on the podcast. He'd probably do it in a heartbeat. He probably has some funny ass oh, yeah. shit to do. You know, but... I actually had the idea. I was like, maybe, maybe, maybe I should just fuck off and let Peter and Nick do their own podcast. But <laughs> I wonder what that would turn out to be. No. I would enjoy editing that that's for sure i, I like being on this podcast i just like leave the room and let you guys record for like half an hour and then like oh shit um <laughs> oh shit boys you gotta you gotta this is a pretty cool podcast so in our last time that we've met we we came up with a couple new jokes so one of the new jokes is uh, the way his dad says taco bell he says it like this Taco Bell. Where you going taco bell Where you going taco bell and now we have a new joke that i didn't tell on the last one. So it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Steve Quell, a scam artist, knocks on his dad's door. His dad in the sequel says, It's Steve Quell, everybody! It's Steve Quell! And your dad goes, Steve Quell! Steve Quell! And then he runs down the stairs, but in the process, he falls down the stairs. He's like, oh, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> And you want to know what he does every night? It's a fucking shit. The fuck this shit. Stupid fucking guy. The fucking shit. Oh, this, he swears himself to sleep, guys. I can't believe it. 
<laughs> you want to add on to that? Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, we were playing GTA, and if you ever been by the dam in GTA, that big dam, we we uh, because before we were saying we were, we we're making the joke that Steve Quayle. Oh yeah, by the way, if you wanna <laughs> if you wanna catch up on the latest conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can go to Steve Quayle's website. Hey, Steve Quayle. Wait, Basically, hey. Steve Quayle's like a conspiracy theorist, and like he's become such a big joke among us because he's such an idiot. He's just, it's just he has a website full of stupid conspiracy theories. That was my phone, by the way. Oh yeah, put your phone in silent. All right. Such an unprofessional podcast. Eating chips, putting not putting his phone on silent. I can't believe this, Nick. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, she will. Don't worry about, it, buddy. <laughs> I am drinking a seltzer, but... You know. Oh, well, stop being... <laughs> oh, by the way... <laughs> That's not as noisy as eating one, chicks. One thing to add about Steve Quill, he gets all his information from Weebly sites. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. He, he does it because it's a scam artist. There's always going to be people who are like, <gasps> Oh, Brandon, it's all gone. It's going to hit us the in December. Coming. <laughs> it's going to hit us in December. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> So what were you saying about this? Hmm. What was I? Oh, wait, I was explaining who Steve Quayle was. But yeah, anyway, we we made a joke that Steve Quayle was conceived in a dumpster. He lit. He got married in a cardboard box, and, and he records all of his podcasts under the dam in GTA Five, <laughs> or or in California in real life. He records his podcasts underneath a dam in the gutter. Yeah, and like all all his guests he has on his podcast, are like oh this kind of goes. <laughs> yeah, and then. The, so the river that goes out from this uh, dam in GTA Five is like kind of like silky smooth water and like sand. So G- so Steve Quell being Steve Quell is like has this weird obsession with gold. So he's like, oh, we got to go to sell for like five hundred million gold. <laughs> the gold rush to California. <laughs> yeah, the California gold rush. Like eighteen forty nine. And then so Steve Quell thinks like he's got gold in this dam. So that's why he's like has his podcast under the dam. Yeah, but for real, it's just a bunch of trinkets he got out of a California gift shop. (laughs) (laughs) That way, in San Jose. Yeah. Anywho, the other joke that we have is, if you ever play GTA V and you turn on a certain station, which is the Mexican station. (laughs) 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 So these are two guys. There's these two two, uh, comedy team on the the, uh, Mexican station. One of them speaks... Spanish, I assume, and well, the other just one has a heavy Mexican accent. Yeah, so he's like, "We need to find more fake plastic people that want to be famous." There's not enough of them. Oh, by the way, I beat my wife every single day. It's GTA back at it again with all the stereotypes. <laughs> GTA has a lot of stereotypes. Like. Yeah, for black, Mexican, Hispanic, whatever you call it. Yeah. So. <laughs> it could be called a racist game, to be honest. But eh. oh, who cares? People are gonna play it anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's still fun. I don't care if it's racist. Well, it's not really racist. It's just it makes a lot of questionable jokes about <laughs> about certain race. Yeah, stereotyping. So <laughs> there's this one guy in GTA Five, and I don't know how often he comes up. He's mainly near the hospital in the ghetto. And excuse me, I'm drinking my drink. And so if you bump into this guy. He's like, what's the matter with you? You know some son, I'm going to pull a stick out of your ass. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know I had a stick in my ass to begin with, but okay. We'll that's, see. The, that's where Michael holds all his guns. Yeah. Uh, Isn't but, uh, it funny that like yeah. my dad's name is Michael and the main, one of the main characters in the game's name is Michael? Yeah, excluding the fact we that actually, <laughs> We actually, because my dad used to drive this old Astro van. <laughs> <laughs> this old Chevy Astro van. It was like it was like the most fucked up van ever because we had it for like six years before we got rid of it. And he still had it when when I moved out, but it was like it was like he had like oh, he had like it was trash galore on the inside because like, we ne- we had a trash bag on the inside, but we never fucking cared about. We just throw our trash wherever. And this was like a little kid's version of me and my siblings, but and then one day like the step on the passenger side where, where my mom always sat it was like it like broke off, like the metal underneath broke off. Oh, we gotta get up the tw- oh yeah, they puts twine on the thing. Yeah, he holds it up with twine. Oh yeah, so da- it's basically a redneck van. <laughs> the fucking Dave Pierce showed me that. It was hilarious because literally 
I, I couldn't even believe it. I was like, wow, this is a, this is the limit to his innovation. <laughs> but and and then what's, of course, what's funny about that is one of those Sundays where they they were doing at, at church, they were doing like a blessing of the cars or whatever, and, <laughs> and my mom had me stand in front of it so people wouldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how embarrassing! <laughs> I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't really care. Oh my god! But that that was hilarious. But then there's this other joke that we didn't mention that I forgot to dig up. That one time. I don't know how this happened because I wasn't there. You might know how it happened. The whole screwdriver with the doorknob. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, one day, I don't remember how, but somehow, I forget why. A lot of shit in our house our house broke <laughs> just because we were little kids and we broke shit all the time. <laughs> Nick's laughing too hard. He can't even chew with his mouth shut. <laughs> well, here's the thing. What happens is... I go up there for the first time. I go up to Bristol, where they live, or they used to live. And I, I walk into the house, and, you know, I, I don't think anything of the door. Like, why would you think everything of the door? Well, I go out in the morning, and me and Peter and Will are just, like, hanging around. And I decide to go outside to get a little breath of fresh air. What happens is, I'm like, hey, Peter, how do you open the door here? How do you, like, Peter, how do you open the door? Because there's a screwdriver on the friggin' door. I guess that's where that's where the doorknob was supposed to be. Yeah, somehow it broke off. So you like, but you could still open it. It was like it was like a little tiny metal thing that you could turn. So and it had holes in it. So like you could attach a doorknob to it, obviously. So what my dad did, he stuck a screwdriver through, like a Phillips screwdriver through the holes, and you turned it. You went Rah! and like scratched the door. Oh my god! So by the time we got a new doorknob, there was like a circle around the doorknob. <laughs> there was like this scratched out circle around it, because that's where the screwdriver would scrape the door. <laughs> is it that the limit to his innovation? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though because he's a redneck that's what it is he's just so stupid okay so you want to do it you, here's a demonstration of how he sings the church literally my dad thinks he's so good at singing he goes to a barbershop place and he sings in a barbershop chorus he's like the only he's like the th- one of three bass bases in that barbershop chorus and the whole chorus so he's like i guess he's like supposed to sing really loudly so the bass comes through so he's just (laughs) (laughs) it's it's really bad oh my god so literally you can hear him like when we were altar servers at our church and we in every single time like when he's there we go by he always like sits like in the pews and he always like is toward like the front or the back, and literally you can hear. It's usually the, towards the back now. Yeah, you can because we're altar servers. Yeah. So whenever we do the procession, it's yeah. you can always hear him when you're walking by. It's like <laughs> I can't help but laugh. So we have a few new things going around in our church. So there's this deacon who who comes around every once in a while oh, to help yeah, serve because... since my dad got ordained a priest. Yeah, his and... dad got ordained a priest, so we've been we've been swapping out deacons, deacons. with this other church. So we've been we've been in, having in all these Massachusetts. Fun... We've had all these funky <laughs> funky uh funky uh deacons in our church. So some of them are like really loud, some of them are like really uh... they do like cuz every church does things a little slightly differently. So they would do how they do it in their church so and like (laughs) one day i was like i was like um it was time to have the the smaller altar service go out with the candles and stand in front of the altar or whatever Mm -hmm. and uh, i went to open the door and at the same time because you're supposed to open the door for the deacons whenever Mm -hmm. they go out but apparently like i went to open the door and it's by uh, but that was me though remember Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was you, and yeah. you went to open the door, yeah. and at the same time, the deacon was coming over. He wasn't going out, though. He yeah. was he was going to do something on that side of the yeah. table. but we had so to have an altar server go he, out the door. He thought Nick was mistaken in, like, opening the door for him, so he shuts it, he takes it, and he shuts it. And, <laughs> and literally, I just looked like, around, stands, what is he, going on here? He, like, stands, faces the altar, and, like, just, just, like, praying or whatever, and, like, we're just standing there like, what? <laughs> we're relenting the candle guy out all right and then <laughs> and that, that happened that almost happened the second time last week we but he, luckily he didn't slam the door on no literally he just takes it slams the door i'm like what and then so there's this other time where that same deacon 
go like there we have the communion obviously and so the deacon like helps out the priest consecrate and like distribute and whatnot so one time the deacon comes in he's like master break the bread and peter is sitting and staying next to me and he starts like bawling his eyes out he's like laughing his ass off <laughs> i'm like peter what is the matter with you <clears throat> and so his reasons were saying hey imagine if he says master bait the bread <laughs> master bait the bread <laughs> master bait the bread hey that was a tongue slip right there so Peter well, we, laughs at the dumbest things sometimes, I swear. Peter's like, oh, he said something funny. <laughs> hey, He's there's like, a lot of people in here. <laughs> Peter's like five. He'll laugh at anything that's stupid. He's like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, this entertains us during church, but. <laughs> like, he'll see, he'll like see something, like a kid, like scream or something in church. <laughs> like, like they normally do. <laughs> it'll uh, just be, oh, oh, I'm so loud. Oh. <laughs> it's funny, though. But, hey, um. <laughs> For our joke about the whole master break the bread thing and slamming the door, me, me and my friend Nick have made the comedy out of it. So we combine the two scenes together. So go, master break the bread, pretending he's tying up his robes, and then he slams the car door shut. So, oh yeah, I'll uh, I'll put uh, I'll put I'll, I'll upload that that video of yours <laughs> and I'll put it unlisted. I'll put it in the description of this video. You may not need to. Why don't I just? Pull up the video right now. Never mind. I won't pull up the video. Yeah. And you should, you should post it on like YouTube or something. And I'll yeah. link to it. And just but, make it like unlisted if you don't want it public. But but remember, <laughs> master, break the bread. And we add the other thing. It doesn't benefit him to have the door open. <laughs> doesn't benefit me. So here's another joke we have. Apparently, we've got to quiet down a little bit because we're being a little too loud, apparently. My mom just texts me, you be too loud. <laughs> okay, so over the summer, me and Will went to St. Anselm's for a uh, NAMI retreat convention. It was very nice, except for there was this one day when we were all so cranky, Name and we were me, trying to decide where to put the friggin' fans. NAMI is our youth group, by the way, in the yeah. church. Basically, we get together with all the other churches around uh, around, around the U.S., and we have this cool big convention, which is really fun. But the first night, we couldn't sleep for shit because we're stuck in the third floor, and this is in the middle of July or like June. June. It, it was in June. the summer. It was really it was hot it and was steamy in there because the school year in in New England is like it's all it's always cold during the school year, so they don't have air conditioners in colleges. So what we did was we had like fans and shit but that didn't do anything so we couldn't sleep basically we were like nick was half naked he only <laughs> i only wore my like you know my um my gym shorts and my i didn't wear anything else because i was just sweating my ass off yeah and so. i was like i was hot and our friend joe was hot we we're bunking together and we we're like oh man so the next morning it was just like we got like probably two hours to sleep tops i got none like we, not even a minute we, my melatonin didn't kick in yeah neither did mine we we both took melatonin and none it didn't kick in because it, like, it was just too uncomfortably hot and the caffeine that we had the day oh yeah we had mountain dew for like dinner and we're like oh fuck mm -hmm. we're fucked but yeah. <laughs> well not just mountain dew for dinner obviously we had that with our dinner but mm -hmm. Anyways, so the next morning we get up, we go eat breakfast, and like we don't, we're we're like hangry, but we did we didn't even notice it. But we go eat, we go to the beach that day, that yeah. morning. Yeah. And um. Yeah, we go to Hampton Beach, and it's freezing cold. The water, even yeah. though it's such a hot day. We and... we had fun at Hampton Beach, and it was yeah, yeah, it was nice and windy. Obviously, because. It's in New in New England. Only New Englanders are gonna enjoy it because it's really freaking cold. But yeah. Like, so everybody else were like, "Oh, it's so cold." Yeah, because they're like from Miami, Chicago, <laughs> California. Yeah. They're and not. Everybody used to was this complaining. Garbage. It was so cold. It was like, it was "Hey, what do you expect?" Me and Nick were like, "Ah, it's fine." <laughs> well, I was just I was freezing. The water was cold, but it was really nice breezy weather. Well, in late June, what do you expect? So anyhow, continuing yeah. that story. We, we we get I, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. so we get back to uh, Saint Anselm's College. It's about maybe like two three o'clock in the afternoon, and you know me, Will, and Joe are just like kind of on edge. We're just like Bleh. yeah, because we're, we're really tired. we're it's like right before we go to get lunch, we're like dinner hang, actually dinner it was or dinner. dinner I got dinner. dinner or lunch, whatever it was. But we're hangry. We're we're tired. You know, we're really we're, we're short tempered basically. Yeah, we're really very, very we're, short tempered. We're really cranky. So. And, like, because it was so hot last night, a friend Joe 
um, he was like, oh, we got to reposition the fans to do something. Maybe we could help us a little bit. I was like, no, just leave them how they are. And, you know, we got into a really stupid fight about fans. <laughs> it was so stupid. And, like, we were like, no, we got to put them like this. And we're, yeah, like, you do, we're, we're like, basically yo. yelling at each other. Mm. And, like, we got so pissed at each other. Yeah, and I was caught right in the middle of it. And I was thinking, you two better shut up or else I'm going to bash your two heads together. Because I, I said on the Facebook messages, guys, please no fighting in this one. <laughs> yeah. but And I was yeah, yelling the at the both of them. And so what ends up happening is, like, our supervisor, Father Tom, comes over. He's like, hey, you guys, like, okay? And we're just like, yeah, we're just tired. We're angry, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It says, you know, guys, I get it. You guys didn't sleep well last night. These rooms are uncomfortable. Joe can be stubborn. You guys you guys need to calm it down. We're, we're here to have fun whatnot. <laughs> calm the fuck down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, calm. So what ends up happening is that we go to dinner. We don't drink any Mountain Dew. We learn our lesson. Yeah. And that night we slept like babies. Yeah. And that, that was probably like the only negative experience. Well, we look at back at it and laugh, but at the time, it was probably the only negative experience we had about that convention. Mom. It, was all, it was all pretty much pretty positive thing, the convention. Yeah. Well, and so... we pretty much made shit. up with Joe anyway, so... Yeah. So, one, the first day, there was this girl from Chicago. Her name's Maya. And she wore she wore a Chipotle hat. Really? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna bring you're gonna bring Maya up, and you're gonna. You're I'm only gonna bring my side of Maya up. Oh, so okay. right. I go up to Maya. And says, "Hey, you work at um you work at uh, Chipotle?" She says, "Yeah." And I give her a big hug. That's yeah. That's how we made a brand new friend because we found she was wearing her Chipotle hat, and Nick was like, "Oh, Chipotle!" Hey, I love Mexican. gave her a giant hug, and we're like, "Hey, I'm Maya," and like you know, made, well, we made a new friend from Chicago. Yeah, let's not even go any farther than that. Mm -hmm. well. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Anyhow, so after that, um, I actually have a job right now. I got assigned to the airport. Starbucks, boy. St Starbucks and Quiznos. <laughs> Which is funny because that's probably like, that's the one of two Starbucks in New Hampshire. Because yeah. basically everybody in New Hampshire hates Starbucks. And they go to Dunkin' Donuts. Well, yeah, Dunkin' Donuts is our replacement because we're like, oh, we love Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> that's like the New Hampshire mentality. It's like, Dunkin' Donuts Well, people in North Carolina don't know that. But anyhow, <laughs> so this job at the airport is pretty good. Um. During the summer, I had to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning because they wanted me in the morning shift because nobody would work that. So I'm like, fine, whatever. And, man, you you know, you talk about some arrogant assholes who don't want to fly. They're like, all right, hey, sir, what can I do for you? I'd like a venti pike, please. And I'm like, oh, uh, anything else? No, I want a venti pike. I'm like, okay, okay, calm the fuck down. Yeah, Jesus I can Christ. imagine a lot of people be extremely rude there. Yeah, I like, mean, they more, don't more fly. Than, more than your average fast food place. Yeah. Because they're flying somewhere, and usually people, a lot of people flying can be really cranky people. Well, so, well, I've never really flown before, but I know how it can, I, I've, I've, I've heard stories about how people oh, can be You know something, the, so the biggest cocksuckers come in, come into the uh, store on Monday, they're like, you know, Monday's the, the busiest flying day of the week. Everyone flies out for business. Not all of them are a bunch of cocksuckers, but, you know, some of them are. Some of them are just like, okay, I'd like a venti pike, and my wife would like uh, a grande, I don't know. A grande uh, coffee. A grande coffee. <laughs> all right, so, uh, no, let's say, okay, I'd like a venti pike, and my wife wants a uh, piece of lemon cake. I tell him, uh, sir, we're actually all out of lemon cake. But my wife wanted a lemon cake. Sir, we are all out of lemon cake. Can you please explain your wife? But my wife... I don't care what your wife wanted. Can your wife please understand we don't have lemon cake? <laughs> hey, Nick. <laughs> what? So my mom just texted me. She said, tell Nick he's being too loud. <laughs> because, know. you know, we're like yeah. in a condo. So we're... Anyhow. You got those customers that are just so damn stubborn. They don't even know what's going on. Yeah. They just want their coffee. And they just Have you heard that on. story? Oh, my God. I need to tell you about this shit. I heard this online. It was like, apparently this woman was like, she she was like, I don't remember. I don't, I don't know how it works, but like, apparently she was like in the back of the line or something. But she just goes on the plane or something like ahead of people or yeah. something like that. I don't remember. I don't know how it works. So. But basically, she's, like, sitting in this seat, and she, like, wanted to be first on the plane and all that. Mm -hmm. And, like, so, they, like, she's this a fat woman. Oh. And, like, she's, like, <laughs> she's, like, people are, like, okay, you gotta move. You, you're not, you can't be first on the plane. It's, like, people in front of you or whatever. I don't know how it works, but, <laughs> like I said, I don't know how it works. But, so, they basically had to drag her, literally drag her oh, off, yeah. the, mm -hmm. off the train. And, like, by her wrist, drag this fat woman well, off the plane. here's what happened, though. <laughs> Yeah, you probably know it better, yeah, well, like, if you know how everything works. At so, basically what happens is in the plane, 
when you're boarding the plane, you board by group. So let's take let's take uh, Southwest for for example. I hope all of you guys have flown Southwest who've flown. You know, you got Group A, Group B, Group C, et cetera, et cetera. You got Premier, you got First Class, you got Veteran. You know, what happens is you don't have much overhead space on an airplane. It, it really depends where you sit. So this woman wanted as much overhead space as she can possibly get. So she's in the back. She doesn't get much overhead space. So she just she starts cutting her way through the damn line. Well, once you're in an airplane, you're under federal you know law. If you keep violating federal law, they're gonna have to kick your ass out of the airplane because they don't want anyone in danger. You know. So that woman made the mistake of being in that a bitch. So yeah, she just made everybody's day less good. <laughs> And, like, she didn't even get where she was going. She was kicked off. She well, was like, fuck off. They were like, fuck off. You, you can't fly. Them. Oh, yeah. And this was a Delta flight, by the way. And this was from, like, San Diego or whatever. Yeah. And I, I saw that on Phil DeFranco. <laughs> that's, well, a, that's a news YouTube channel, by the way. But seriously, when you're, getting, when you're in an aircraft, please try to cooperate with people. I mean, it doesn't take that. It's not that hard. Yeah. If a flight Some people t- are just so grumpy about it. But if, you, if you're, like, in an aircraft... And the flight attendant asks you to move your seat or asks you to please wait in line, please do as they say. They're not here to make your lives miserable. Please. I mean, they have a flight to prepare. They have better things to do than to listen to your miserable ass complain. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with the pilots. I mean, if True. the pilots go back there and you're causing trouble, they're going to say, you got to get off. I'd hate to be airport security. I oh, bet yeah. they deal with so much bullshit. Already. Oh, yeah. They deal with a lot of horse shit. Oh, trust me. I mean, they're just like trying to get people on their flights, trying to check everything to make sure it ain't, it ain't harmful, and they got people are like, come on, get up. I want to get on my plane. It's like, guys, take it easy. So, a certain movie came out today. Mm. Of, of the day recording this video, Rogue One came out. and Oh, baby. Because what happened last time, last time a Star Wars movie came out, I'm just going on a Facebook hiatus. I'm not looking at facebook until i see the movie so i don't get fucking spoilers because <laughs> last year everybody was like spo- or la- last time a movie came out they were like oh Han died, Han died, oh yeah and like uh, luckily i saw the movie before someone spoiled it but obviously every time you saw a post saying don't spoil star wars you see the comments star wars spoilers and it was like so fucking stupid. I was like, don't, don't spoil Star Wars movies for people. It's so fucking retarded. It's so it ruins the experience. So don't fucking do it. I mean, Star Wars <sighs> is bigger than you think, and people are so passionate about it, and they don't mm-hmm. want to have the fucking movie spoiled. But yeah, but I I would I would have like I I feel like I would have enjoyed Force Awakens less if if fucking someone spoiled it for me. Exactly, because you know exactly <laughs> what's gonna happen. So yeah, like. That, that scene, that one scene in the movie would have been way less dramatic if I knew exactly what was going to happen. I know, right? Well, the, the thing is about this new Star Wars, it's actually not continuing from The Force Awakens. It's, yeah, it it's takes between, place in between episode, episode three, three and, four. and four. So it's basically like when the rebels start forming and the Empire starts like cracking down on the and opposition. And the Empire strikes back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's not that. But. Well... <laughs> Hopefully it's good. And plus, and it, Darth Vader is gonna be in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how long. I he's can't gonna, wait. I can't wait for Darth Vader. I don't know how long he's gonna be. He's probably not gonna be it for very, very long. I hear, but probably not. But I still, I'm still excited for Darth yeah. Vader. At least if you see one scene of him, you'll see it all. Yeah, because I mean, as much as people complained about how much they didn't like that want the like the fan service, the fan service as they call it. Of Luke being in the movie for three seconds. Yeah. Um, hey, at least he was still in there. Yeah, I liked that scene. It was a cool scene, to be honest. And it was very well shot, too. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Yeah, well... And basically, we're going to watch Force Awakens again tonight to get pumped for the movie. I don't know when we're going to see it, but I can't wait to see it. Maybe wait. we'll do another episode of the podcast talking about it after we see it. But. The thing about Force Awakens... Or no, Rogue, excuse me, Rogue One, is that knowing it's Star Wars, the theaters are going to be packed. So yeah, for you're the gonna first have, few weeks. You're anyways. gonna have to wait like a first few weeks. I mean, you have to get reservations to see this damn movie practically. So. Yeah, I saw it. I was lucky to see Force Awakens on like the second week because mm. my friend that like snagged tickets like the last tickets and a sold out. Th- he was the one that sold out the theater. Mm-hmm. So we were in a packed theater when I saw this movie. Which is funny because whenever I go to a movie theater, it's barely ever sold out. I know. Like the the movie I'd seen before that was cool. like. I saw pixels in theater in theaters, and that was like a that was that was like a critically 
bad movie. I enjoyed it, but it was, like, critically, it was, like, panned, and no one liked it. So, like, it was just me and, like, probably two other families in that theater. And, I mean, I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. Yeah, the last movie (laughs) I I saw in theaters was with uh, Nick Sully, the one about him laying on the plane. It was it was a good size. Oh, it was good. I want to see that. It's a good movie. That but, looks like a good movie. Oh, it's really really good. Other but movies I want to see. Let are me like, just uh, say, I mean, Sully compared to The Force Awakens when I saw it down in Tennessee, like a, a day after Christmas. But man, you know, Force Awakens really smashed it with like you know attendance probably. But yeah. I'll have to say though, last year when they started running like showing like all the scenes in the movie theaters of people like lining up waiting for go see Star Wars, you could tell. People were pretty passionate about, it and they really, really want to see this movie. So. It always reminded me when when I when I went to the theater and there were so many people there because Force Awakens. Yeah, it reminded me of all the. Have you ever seen that old footage of when they went to see like the second Star Wars movie for the first time? Like, yeah, all that footage that uh-huh. that was like. There's so many Star Wars fans like, like yeah, Star Wars. Mm. It's like. Those people are probably like eighty years old now, but <laughs> oh, those are like nineteen eighty. So yeah, and the, <laughs> it was it, that was like really cool. It's kind of it's kind of cool to see like that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, one a couple takeaways from that Star from that Force Awakens was that when you had the Millennium Falcon fly, people were like overjoyed. When you had Han Solo die, people were like crying. When you had I don't know Kylo Ren shooting innocent civilian or ordering innocent civilians to be shot, everyone's like in shock. Um, you know, you had, you had your ups and downs and that movie was not like, you know, slow in some of its plot. Oh, the whole thing was fast paced. It was like, bam, 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 bam. I know. It was like shot after shot. Something was happening. I know. Something it, exciting. The problem is in some of these other Star Wars, it was either dramatic or exciting I know. throughout the entire movie. The problem is in some of these other Star Wars, they drag like the romance out too long or they drag out oh, the yeah. stupid plots and they don't have enough battle scenes. It's like in like, the prequels. Um, the pre- I, I mean, I as much as people hate the prequels, I I enjoyed them, but yeah. like I mean, I do agree they're they're the inferior Star Wars movies. Yeah, and like, because they they're yeah. not that much, not as much action. But yeah. my favorite, my favorite out of the prequels has to be the third one because mm-hmm. just the ending fight between Obi Wan and Anakin. Darth Vader. That was my favorite. Mm, yeah. That used to be my favorite Star Wars movie, but I kind of changed my mind. My I go from one to the other, but. Yeah. I don't know. I really like that movie. <laughs> yeah, my favorite's like the New Hope. Well, my favorite was the New Hope, but now my favorite's definitely the Force Awakens. It might be even be Rogue One, depending on how good it is. Who knows? But you know, the one thing I noticed about the Star Wars in the new Star Wars or the one that was released last year is that you could tell it got a little bit more violent. You know, the battles got more violent. The stormtroopers got better. There was actually blood in this one. Oh yeah. Um, they're space Nazis, guys. The First Order. They're they're space Nazis. Kylo Ren is the handsomer version of Hitler. (laughs) No, Snoke would be Hitler, basically. Oh, yeah, Snoke. Supreme Leader, remember? Freaking Kylo Ren would be, I don't know, who's... All right. Here, I'll break it down for... I'm a World War II uh, expert guy, so I'll break it (laughs) down. The World War II expert guy on the case. Okay, so (laughs) for space Nazis, Supreme Leader Snoke is obviously Hitler. Kylo Ren is Heinrich Himmler, the leader of the SS. He's basically the murderer guy. The yeah. murderer guy. Yeah. I love and, the murderer guys. Don't yeah, you? and he's and <laughs> and also the other thing about Himmler was that he was basically a right a right hand man at Hitler, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, General Hux is uh, an, another SS officer by the name of Reinhard Heydrich. He was a very ruthless individual, and you know, like General Hux, destroying all those plants at one time. He didn't care what he had to do to. Assert, assert the first order's power and hydrogen didn't care what he had to do to assert the nazis power he'd kill 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 the stormtroopers would probably be like the ss soldiers um let me think i'm trying to think if there's any oh the resistance might be i don't know the french resistance the polish resistance it doesn't really matter basically it's, anyone who's not germany yeah. that's against them <laughs> yeah and i don't know i'm trying to think any phasma captain phasma would probably be i don't know some just Hitler's wife <laughs> or no. Hitler's mom. <laughs> Hitler's mom. Yeah, that's great. Remember, he actually did like paintings of Hitler of her mom, his mom. Mm-hmm. Those are weird photos, but whatever. <laughs> so I don't think Phasma is old enough to be Snoke's mom, but <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. So, so some World War Two comparisons, like the massacres with all those villagers, is probably what like 
some of the Nazis did when they went through like you know villages. They probably like pillaged them, robbed them, shot the civilians, burned down the buildings. Um, you know all those attacks that they had between the First Order and the Resistance. Probably just the Nazis versus the Americans just destroying everything in their path and then losing eventually because they made some stupid mistakes. These are a bunch of retards. Mm -hmm. Fun fact: Did you know that? Uh... Hitler gassed gay people as well. I know. Because he thought they were like a, a threat to uh, his religion or whatever. I know. <laughs> Which you is know, just as fucked up as gassing Jews. He like he marked the Jews with the star of David David and he marked the gays with like a pink pink, pink triangles. Uh -huh. Now what would fun be fact. fun facts? Fun facts with Willie. Huh? No. Now what would be interesting is that when they continued the Force Awakens, imagine if the First Order how their Star Killer base got blown up. How Kylo Ren lost to Rey. How their plans were all foiled. They get so pissed off that they actually build concentration camps and they capture anyone who is associated with the Resistance and they put them in these concentration camps. <laughs> Rey, and, Rey is John F. Kennedy, the chosen one. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And they have these Resistance prisoners. They're beaten. They're starved. They're shot. Actually, build the new um, Star Killer base and. And they have, and they actually show murder scenes of like the stormtrooper, like I don't know, Snoke wanting to see executions by the uh, stormtroopers because they didn't work right. You know, they literally had the friggin' red pads on their shoulders mm -hmm. in the Force Awakens, so it's like it's not hard to draw the conclusion that they could be comparable to Nazis. <laughs> yeah, and then like you know, I don't know, you have a couple battles between the Resistance and the First Order. The Resistance like loses; they start having more people shoved into these camps, and after. That episode, in the end, what happens is, like, Ray, Finn, uh, Leia, Luke, and all these Resistance people liberate these camps, and they see, like, the horrors that the First Order has put these, through, put these people through. Oh, yeah, because yeah. a lot of American soldiers want to liberate them. And yeah. They're like, oh, shit, this is, this is more fucked up than I thought it was. I know, and then, like, you know, Kylo Ren and Hux and Snoke are all, like, responsible for murder. <laughs> Imagine I had to, like, my freaking history page pull, pulled up about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, it'd be, be kind of funny if you were just reading my history page. <laughs> now, could you imagine Kylo Ren as a concentration camp commander? Oh, my God. He's, like, pr having all these prisoners for roll call. He'd be like, all right, shoot him. They wouldn't he even use the gas chambers. He would just be killing everybody. I know. The he would get pissed off at, all, at, at them all. Be like, oh, <laughs> I know. Hux would probably be, like, blowing them up and whatnot. <laughs> Like yeah, they would. It would be pretty fun. It would be pretty cool if they actually did a Star Wars Holocaust with all these Resistance people in, and like you know. Except so probably if if they did do something like that, it probably wouldn't be obviously. They probably wouldn't be gassing Jews. That would be a little bit, a little bit insensitive. But they, I, I could see them doing something like that. But like shooting know. the prisoners or beating them or like starving them and yeah. Now maybe J.J. Abrams is a is a World War II fanatic. He's he a be. he's a World War II intelligence man, just like you. Yeah. <laughs> now, the thing I've noticed now, I get yeah, Kylo Ren may not be as powerful as Darth Vader, but I wish people would stop. You wish you were as yeah. powerful as Darth Vader. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, I really, really wish people would stop saying that Kylo Ren is actually good because he's not. He's not a good person at all. He's evil. Yeah, some people think he. Well, I mean, I thought it would be cool, a cool twist if he actually joined the light. Like, if Han Solo like convinced him to like join the light side or whatever. Yeah. I thought that would have been like really like a weird twist, and then they would have brought some other villain along. Yeah. that would have been like a that would have been cool. But no, I, I bet you that's how I would have done it if I directed the movie. But but Kylo <laughs> Ren's shield is evil by killing yeah. his father. He he yeah he he's he's permanently evil because he killed his pop. Poppy. Yeah, he killed his pappy. Now he's 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 permanently evil. There's actually an interesting. Uh, sh there's a lot of interesting videos I've seen on it. There's this there's this show I like called Frame by Frame on yeah. YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, and it like, it was like it it like took like little details and and like s said how like they that insinuated something or like because when um when they they were talking there was like half. Yeah, half blue light yeah, on Ren's face I know that. and half red. Yeah, and when he goes to stab, um, his it, father, his father, his face goes all red. I know, from, right? from the lightsaber, so that's like insinuating he's like permanently in the dark side now. Mm. Mm. 
I know people have like made observations about that. Yeah, it's really cool how he how he shot that. That was like that was like my favorite scene in that movie. <laughs> I know. Well, the thing that I really think that you know from what... hey, hey, at least he didn't kill Chewie. Is my favorite Star Wars character. <laughs> oh well, he might imagine, kill him. imagine that scene except it, it was Chewie the one trying to lose. He's like, oh come on, man, go to the dark side, and then he stabs Chewie. Yeah, right. That would have right. caused outrage. <laughs> I know, right? Well, We're like, seriously, you killed Chewie? <laughs> that would have been way more dramatic if you killed Han Solo. I mean, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> so going back to Kylo Ren being so called good. So first off, he's not. <laughs> yeah, first off, he betrays his uncle Luke Skywalker, kills off all the Jedi. He joins a criminal organization, essentially the First Order. <laughs> he joins the mafia. <laughs> hey boys. <laughs> <laughs> he joins like the Nazi party. He kills innocent. He orders innocent civilians to be killed on Jakku. He kills like that guy with the force knowledge on Jakku personally oh the guy that had like the key to the yeah. map that little yeah. piece of the map that yeah. they were looking for yeah he personally kills him and then he kills I his bet, own if father if I had read the books he would know who that is but I have yeah. no idea who that was I just assumed it was some random yeah. smart person that had the key but I don't yeah. know I and bet, I, he's probably some important character in like the books or something like that and then, of course, he honors Darth Vader, who, which Darth Vader was obviously evil. And then, of course, he has this rage behind him, which which makes him even more evil. He kills his father, which makes him evil. I don't see any good in Kylo Ren. I don't. I just don't. I think he was. I think he was always evil. Well, and, obviously, there was that scene where he's like with the he was with Darth Vader, Tommy. He's like, oh, "Show me the power of the dark side, because I feel the pull to the light." Whoa. <laughs> He's yeah. like a little baby about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people don't like. Well, not a lot of people, but some people don't like uh, Kylo Ren because mm. he's very similar to how Anakin was in the prequels. Like, oh yeah. Like a lot of people say Anakin was like really whiny. Yeah. He's Anakin. Like, oh, I, was, like, I don't like Obi Wan. He's a jerk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the difference between Kylo Ren and Anakin was that Anakin was a Jedi and he wasn't. He was supposed to control his emotions, and Kylo Ren. Is the villain and he's <laughs> not supposed to. Control. Anakin had to keep it in his pants. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Which he didn't. He failed, obviously, because that's why Luke and Leia were born. <laughs> that's how the real chosen ones were born. Uh huh. But know, imagine if Leia was a Jedi. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> it probably might happen. You never know. People have speculated that for years and years and years. But I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think anything like that would happen. But, but we should probably wrap it up here yeah. because I think we've been recording for like an hour and a half now. Yeah. So I, I usually aim for half an hour, but it's fine. If we go over, it's whatever. It's whatever. It's whatever. Hey, what Okay. Hey, guys. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks, Nick, for coming on my podcast once again. Any, anytime, man. Anytime. I'll link to his channel again, even though he doesn't really he doesn't really upload much. He's, no, he's, I, he's, I kind of erased all my videos and, like, just use it for commenting and liking stuff, so. Yeah, but if he ever uploads again, then you'll be subscribed, I guess. But I'll also, uh, I'll leave a link to, like, videos I reference and stuff like that. And I was... Yeah, pretty much it. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, God, goodbye, oh. you plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> Call my fans a plumber. <laughs> <laughs>